today. A video that's been a long time coming. A lot of people have wanted me to cover this one for a while since I've mentioned it a while back with Dr. Stephen Lane. Today we finally look into caffeine as an endurance sports performance enhancer. Does it work? What's it all about? So we've got Dr. Slane in today to tell us all about it. Howdy. So first up, Dr. Stephen Lane, tell us your qualifications and your background in regards to today's topic with caffeine as used in sports performance. Uh, I guess part of my PhD was exercise performance. So yep. and one part of that was how caffeine affects the body. So I did two different studies. Yep. One was the effects of caffeine on like a, an ergo session to see how it affects performance. And the other one was the effects of um, caffeine and beetroot juice, uh, specifically under the um, performance effects of a time trial, which we did for the 2012 London Olympics for the Australian team. Okay, so extensive so, background in this. I've read lots and lots on caffeine. Awesome. And you like a good coffee too. I do like a good coffee. <laughs> so let's go quick fire with the question, so straight to the point. First question, does it work, yes or no? Caffeine is one of the um, supplements that is shown to work. Like, I don't think anyone's going to dispute that caffeine has an ergogenic effect. Right. It makes you go faster, it wakes you up, it's a, essentially a central nervous system stimulant. Right. So, so peer-reviewed studies, this is out there, this is known, it does work. Two thumbs up. 100%. Excellent, that's what we like to hear. Next question, how does it work? Can you give us an overview? I know there's a lot of stuff going yeah, on in the background. Can you keep give it us pretty simple. So caffeine's a stimulant, so it's a central nervous system stimulant. It replicates a, um, similar to adrenaline or noradrenaline or a catecholamine in the body. It binds to a receptor and has a stimulating effect on the body. Right. So essentially it will work by decreasing your rating of perceived exertion. It makes things feel easier. Okay. That's pretty much the basis of it. It I has like a it. few other effects, metabolic effects. It can make you burn more fat in preference to carbohydrate. We think there's some evidence for that. Right. Um, it can increase nerve conduction. So you, if your your brain connected to your muscle, you will have a harder contraction from the muscle if you have caffeine. There's different um, mechanisms behind that, but that's pretty complex stuff. Oh, excellent, good overview there. Now, third question, how much do we need for the optimal effect? Because we can have a coffee, or we can have a Red Bull, or we can have, and we'll go into the different types of caffeine in a sec, but what's the, I guess, optimal intake? Yep, so I'd talk minimum levels versus maximum levels. Back in the days, back in the 90s and the 80s, in research, they used to use up to 12 milligrams per kilogram so of body mass. Coffee-wise, that's, I mean, it's hard to measure a coffee, but 12 coffees, maybe? So that's like, say for a 70 kilo person, let's say 10 milligrams is 700 milligrams of caffeine. That's, in a standard cup of coffee, there's, say, 70 to 100. So that might be 10 cups of coffee. Right. That's when you start getting these jitters and stuff's not working properly, you lose some cognitive function. But that's what they tested. Okay. We now know, so let's go to the lower end of the spectrum, maybe 1.5 to 3 milligrams is where we sort of aim now. Yep. Generally, in, in research, we use about 3 milligrams per kilogram of body mass. So for a 70 kilo athlete, that would be 210 milligrams of caffeine. Yep maybe two to three good coffees okay. is going to get you there. No worries. Now, talking about the types of caffeine, how do we measure the dose? Because a coffee, as you said, can be between maybe 50, maybe even 150, double shots different again, different types of grinds. Yep. So like an instant coffee versus an espresso versus a bean from a different manufacturer, we don't know how much is in a coffee. Right. There's caffeine in tea, then coffee in chocolate, but you can't really quantify how much is there. Cans of Coke? Yeah, I think there's 80 milligrams in a can of Coke. That not is somewhat the, quantifiable. They actually don't specify that on the can either. Uh, I've looked at that. Maybe it does, I'm not sure. We'll have to look at it online. So, so we tend to try and use a known measurable dose of caffeine, right. which is what we've got in front of us with and a bunch of different stuff. This is where we come to what we've got today. We've got all our different types of caffeine laid out. So we've got from, um, we've got the Red Bulls, we all know Red Bull. I think there's 80 milligrams of caffeine in a Red Bull. 80 with that, but then you've also got carbohydrate in that too. There's carbohydrate, there's also anything with an ene on the end, so there's e. caffeine, yep. there's taurine, there's gr granine, or what a gr what's that G one? 
something like that. Yep. But there's a lot of other stimulants in ca- in a Red Bull. Okay, so there's probably caffeine. more going on in a Red Bull than just the caffeine. Yeah, I okay. like Red Bull because if you are habituated to caffeine, you drink a lot of coffee, mm-hmm. a Red Bull can have a little bit better effect sometimes than just caffeine itself. Okay, so, so known, so 80 milligrams in that. Okay, what else have we got here? We've got some standard gels, we've got a performance gel, We've got some chewing gum, we've got no dose. So the ones I suppose people are familiar with is like I'm gonna have a, an energy gel with caffeine in it. Yep. So there's a couple of different sorts. They range from very minimal amounts, maybe 30 milligrams. Yep, 35 in that one up there. Up to yep. some ones available here in Australia. We can get 75 milligrams in an SIS gel. So you're talking around coffee level there. There's probably yep. half a coffee in that gel. There's probably a full coffee in one of those gels. You've you got a gel get bomb in that some one. 150 milligram SIS. SIS ones. 150, right. Yep, so there's a fair bit. Okay. Then if you're in America, you get some crazy ones. They don't have the regulations that we do here in Australia. Speaking of what's available in America, five hour energy. Um, we've got, I bought some of those back from last week. And we've also got a seven select, which is a 7-Eleven five hour energy, extra strength cola flavor. Now- 7-Eleven make one? 7-Eleven, well, it's got seven select. Is that how they stay awake all night? It is must be, it must be. They just chug them behind the counter there. Nice. That one there has 260 milligrams of caffeine. Awesome. So we do have no-dose pills. I mean, they're sort of old school. Um, they're only 100 No-dose each. are good. You can get them from the supermarket. There's 100 milligrams per capsule. Yep. It's a nice controlled dose. But. Those things are rocket shots. So again, I'd be careful having those around bedtime. <laughs> 260 is quite a lot. And we've also got some, now what, tell us what this is. Uh, that one is, that is a tub of caffeine, just caffeine. Pure caffeine. Pure caffeine. Lethal this is dose. the stuff we use. In, yeah, if you had all that, you'd be, we'd be dead by the end of this probably. The, that's from a compounding chemist. That's what we use in research. Right. So I would, it's just a white powder. What does it, it smell like? dodgy. It's, well, here's, it smell like funnily red? enough, you can characterize caffeine. It's very bitter. It's very tangy. Okay, I won't it's, even taste that, but I do want to have a, a smell to see if I can get a... Uh, but, yeah, don't have a smell. Don't sniff it too much, though. Now, I've been told at science class you do that rather than... No, probably doesn't it smells smell. like baby powder. No, I don't think it's got an essence. I think it's What's... more so of a... What's kind of weird though is that is a lethal dose of caffeine right there. I mean, these, I mean, you see kids running around drinking these before breakfast. So um, we take that in research and because we want to disguise if it's in actually okay. caffeine or not, we'll yep. pop it in a little capsule, a yep. bunch of capsules right. in what we call an opaque capsule. Yep. And like probably for enough for one person would go into two capsules full. Right. And that'd be maybe 300 milligrams. Right. now. With different types of caffeine, there's different, I guess, I guess ingestion or um, uptake time, or effectively, in my terms, how soon do these kick in? Yeah, so how, when do you need them prior to an event? That's what I was asking. So generally, <laughs> anything you ingest orally, yep. we say is somewhere between 45 and 60 minutes mm-hmm. before you see it peak concentration in the blood. I've got a story to tell about no dose. I did a time trial and I forgot to take my caffeine before the time trial. Phillip Island, a few years ago back in the rain, I think you were there. I took, I think, two no dose, which was 200 milligrams at the time, at about 10 minutes before the start line. Yeah. It was a 25 minute time trial. Yeah. I came back and I was buzzing at the end, not during the race, so I messed that up. What well, I the... think that's a good point, actually, because I think it's good if you're in a road race, like mm-hmm. maybe a crit, mm-hmm. yeah, where. You don't want to necessarily necessarily be on the start line just buzzing. Yep. You kind of want to still be chilled and calm. Yep. So having ingesting it maybe only half an hour or 20 minutes before, mm-hmm. so it reaches peak concentration during the event and maybe towards the later end of the event when the it's going to go down. Yep, when the moves start and make, yep. yeah, getting made. Yep, and you've got some graphs for us we can put up on the screen now. Yep. In regard to that. Got a couple of uh, absorption rates. Okay, yep. Um, I'll link to those below as well so people can click through and have a look at those and I'll also link to Dr. Stephen Lane's website, HP Tech, cool. um, where we can ask more questions I guess. So okay. the main one would be a capsule or something that you ingest and is absorbed in the stomach mm-hmm. is about 45 to 60 minutes. Yep. Something that's a little bit quicker that we use these days in research which I used in my studies is a caffeinated chewing gum mm-hmm. because it's in the mouth and things get, get absorbed in the mouth. That peak absorption rate is a lot quicker, so it might be 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, so a lot quicker. So that's what I should have had at the time trial if I was a bit late on my caffeine intake yep. rather than the no dose. So my right. favorite thing to do is I will chew a piece of caffeine gum, there's 100 milligrams. 
I'll chew a piece at the start of my warm up. Mm -hmm. So by the end of the warm up, I'm starting to do the harder intensity part. Yep. I'm starting to feel good. And then once I take my bike off the trainer and I'm sort of just going, okay, race mode, I'm gonna go up to the start line, I'll chew another piece. Mm -hmm. And then usually, I kind of find it calming to chew as well. So usually I'll be at the start line, I'm still chewing. Breathing and then as I'm as well. going out the road, yep. just trying to that first five minutes to, to try and remain calm and not blow myself up, I'll sort of still be chewing mm -hmm. and then I'll kind of spit it out at some point in the first five minutes or so. Alrighty, okay, so in summary, it does work. They're the different types of caffeine you can buy off the shelf. Um, it isn't banned in sport yet. Don't overdo it because there's no use in more is not better. I guess with yens in these coffee, more is always better because coffee's good. But for this sort of stuff here, so three milligrams per kilo of body weight. So you'll have to do your own math on that with your own body weight. So performance increase wise, percentage wise, is there any sort of known, you know, if you take you know, the three to five milligrams per kilo of body weight of caffeine, yep. percentage wise, performance increase over a certain time periods? Uh, yeah, it's a hard one to answer because it's so different between individuals right. and between different events. Mm -hmm. I would say if only from, I can only comment on what I've seen in my studies where we used caffeine and measured how much it improves power output. I believe we saw in the realm of about a 4% increase in power output, probably at the most. Okay, at the most, at maximum four? Yeah, about 4%. So if you're doing, say, it might increase power from 280 mm -hmm. up to 290, 300. That's maybe. some good training. That takes a while to do in training. Under the right situations as right. well. Right, yep, yep. Um, so, and look, we use as a measure of like what's a worthwhile effect in improving performance, it's like 1%. You right. look at the first through to fifth in a, in a time trial results sheet and that performance difference between first and fifth is usually only a couple of percent. Mm. So if you can bump things up a little bit, yep. it can make a difference. Last few things, side effects and warnings. Because what we need to do is make sure we're not gonna get kids out there chewing this stuff down and not sleeping at night. So side effects and warnings. Yeah, um, look, I wouldn't recommend it for adolescents, young adolescents. Yep. Let their legs do the work. If they drink coffee maybe already, it's, kids seem to be pretty young these days having coffees. It's part of cycling culture, I suppose. Coffee shop rides. Yep. But anyone under 16 probably shouldn't be using supplements. Um, pregnant women, the normal standard things. Just okay. be, be cautious of using caffeine under certain situations. If you have yeah, two heart, cans max daily, I think, is on the back of this one. If you have heart so. arrhythmias, some mm -hmm. people suffer from tachycardia and things like that. This can be a trigger. Caffeine, yep. that might be one thing. If you sometimes, I've got a, I've probably got, it's more common than you think. I've got athletes with um, heart conditions that aren't deadly serious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when they can be exercising and their heart all of a sudden will go up to 220 beats a minute, they need to stop exercise and it'll come back down. That's more common than you think, but caffeine can be a trigger for that. So those athletes will usually say, steer clear of it before an event. If you've got an event in the evening mm -hmm. uh, and you're gonna dose up on caffeine, just be prepared that you're probably not gonna be sleeping as good that night. So for a stage race, if you have a, a double day with a time trial in the afternoon, which yeah. we've done quite often in the past. So what yeah. we say, the half-life of caffeine, so it reaches peak, con peak concentration in about, let's say, 60 minutes. Yep. It takes six hours for it to reach half of that peak concentration. Okay, so if you have 200 milligrams or 250, that's gonna take almost 24 hours to get almost out yeah, of the system. Yeah, it stays in the system for a while, but for wow. once it reaches its peak, it takes oh, six yeah. hours to get down to half of that peak. Yeah, yeah. But effect. everyone metabolizes things differently and exercise can lead to higher rates of metabolism and things like that. Okay, bonus round question and a bit controversial. Caffeine as a weight loss aid. I see a lot of things on the shelf these days that call themselves fat blasters or green tea extracts or this mm -hmm. extract or in this, in that. All I see in the actual materials or in the ingredients list there is caffeine. Yeah, I guess it's, if caffeine increases your resting metabolic rate because it's a stimulant, then increasing your resting metabolic rate is gonna increase energy burnt throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd steer clear of using anything that has caffeine or any other stimulant as a weight loss aid. It's just, it can burn you out. Like it does release other hormones and things in the body that you can, after 
accumulated days of being on really high doses, you can fall in a heap afterwards. I find I get hungry. If my metas metabolism is up, I get hungry because it feels like I need more energy in the system. Yeah, so I can be counterproductive. Yeah, that's, that's how but, I find it. Anyway. Yeah, look, I think just don't, don't use the fat blasters and things like that to try and lose weight. I don't no think no shortcuts. Really... So there's a quick overview with Dr. Stephen Lane about caffeine and sports performance. Looks like it's a thumbs up, but again, be cautious with your dosage. And I think I'll stick to the Red Bulls on hot days. All right, thanks for watching. Thanks, Dr. Stephen Lane. See you next time. Cheers.